This is a 15 year old Mac Pro 5,1, a behemoth tower of power that a certain Tim Cook wants you to think is totally obsolete. Well, we don't believe in that kind of thing around here, so in a previous episode, we got an RTX 2070 working in this thing, and today we're gonna take this the rest of the way, upgrade the absolute crap out of it, and turn it into the ultimate Linux Mac Pro. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy going to extreme lengths to get modern performance out of very old computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, we're gonna be doing a lot of mods to this thing today, so buckle up. Last time we had this 2070 working off of a janky external power supply. That was really just a test to make sure that it would work. We're gonna do it a little bit better this time. We're gonna upgrade the RAM to 128 gigabytes, get this thing booting from NVMe, and we're swapping out the dual X550 Xeons for dual X5690s. That's six core, 3.46 gigahertz in each one. And we're gonna try to power this thing in a less stupid way. I really just wanna push this old cheese grater as far as it can be reasonably pushed, because even though Apple abandoned this, the most perfect computer they've ever made, years ago with software and updates, you can still find these dual Xeon powerhouses on Facebook Marketplace for cheap. This is a heck of a lot of computer for a hundred bucks or so. All right, I've got a totally normal setup here. My 8-bit dough wireless Commodore 64 keyboard and the trademark hamster mouse. Let's make sure this thing still boots into its Ubuntu install. Okay, good. This is running 2404 LTS, although we will do a fresh install of Ubuntu on the NVMe drive once we get that working. But for now, I want to, well, run some Geekbench benchmarks here for pre-upgrade. And I also want to back this Ubuntu install up. Good thing the sponsor of today's video is Backblaze. I've actually been a Backblaze user for a few years now, since 2021. It came highly recommended to me by multiple different friends when I was looking for backup solutions. And from the first backup, I could see why. Extremely easy to use, fast, and uh, it just works. With Backblaze, you get unlimited cloud backup for Macs, PCs, and businesses for $99 a year. And various Linux backup packages are supported via their B2 service. You know what? Let's go back up my editing Mac real quick. The Backblaze apps for Mac and PC are super convenient, and Backblaze offers multiple restore options, including rapid recovery in case of data loss or ransomware. There's a full one-year file retention and version history, and you can access your backed up data from anywhere using the web app or iOS or Android apps. There's even a restore by mail option, a hard drive with all of your data shipped to your door. And enterprise control includes granular access permissions, advanced SSO, group management, and compliance support. Over 55 billion files have been restored to Backblaze customers. So visit backblaze.com slash action retro for a free no risk trial and find out why Inc. Magazine, Macworld, PC World, Wired, Tom's Guide, 9to5Mac, and more all recommend Backblaze. Okay, so normally I would just YOLO all the upgrades in at the same time and then wonder why it doesn't work. But instead today we'll take a more reasoned approach and uh, yeah, we will first upgrade the RAM and chuck in this NVMe SSD on a PCI card. Oh uh, yeah, taking these things apart is so freaking nice. Look at that. Can you imagine Apple of today making something so easily upgradable? And there's our two Xeons, well, the giant heat sinks, and all of our banks of memory. Wow, just look at the size of that connector. That is a beast. I decided to go with this combo here, which I believe is pretty much identical to this, except this has a one terabyte 970 Evo Plus that I pulled out of my trash can Mac Pro. And I think that should be 
quite fast. So I think the most reliable way to get this thing booting Linux off of the NVMe is to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher. And what we'll do is install Mac OS on this SSD, which the Mac does like to boot from with OpenCore. And that way we can select either booting Mac OS or booting off of the NVMe to get the maximum speed possible in Linux. All right, doing a fresh install of Mac OS to the SATA SSD. And with Mac OS successfully installed, we can now install Ubuntu. All right, so far so good. Install complete. Okay, after some futzing around with the RAM, as I've discovered, the Mac Pro has triple channel memory. Performance is greatly increased by installing matched pairs of three. I'm gonna leave this at 96 gigs. 96 gigs of RAM ain't too shabby. But now, <laughs> let's see if everything can work together with the GeForce RTX 2070 that has no business working in a Mac Pro. And I'm pretty sure OpenCore will support this and we can see the boot picker to go between Mac OS and Linux. I know this works under Linux from last time. I don't know if Mac OS will be able to display under this, even booting from OpenCore, but hey, let's find out. And just for testing purposes, we will once again resort to our super jank external power supply. And if this does work, then we will hardwire power splicing into the power supply. Oh yeah, it worked. It's booting off the 2070, look at that. I mean, I don't know why I'm so surprised it worked before. Why wouldn't it work again? I mean, other than the fact that I'm filming, which is when things usually fail. But hey, look, it's Ubuntu. All right, let's just check what screen fetch says. Oh yeah, look at this. GeForce RTX 2070 Super, 98 gigs of RAM, and our dual Xeon X5550s, which are, well, not gonna be in there for long. All right, right now we're using the open source Nouveau video driver, but I'm gonna install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers because this is a gaming jank Mac Pro. Now what we're gonna do now is a mod called Pixless where we are going to literally tap into the power cable from the power supply to the motherboard with little wire taps to pull additional power into new connectors for a modern GPU. And this is fairly straightforward. On this cable here, the top four and the bottom four thick cables are the only wires that we care about. The outer two, on each side are ground. The inner two on each side are 12 volts. We're gonna tap into them with these guys. A lot of people take these power supplies out to do it, but I am not smart, so I'm gonna try to do it with the power supply still installed. And uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. Oh uh, yeah, I may not be the smartest peanut butter in the sandwich, but I think I got it. Now to just put some connectors on these wires. All right, everything is connected, yellow to 12 volts, black to ground, and it looks delightfully jank, but most importantly can be completely concealed within the computer. Let's see if this works. All right, I have routed all of the cables internally. In theory, we should have plenty of PCIe power. Assuming I wired everything correctly, which I'm pretty sure I did. Everything's color coded, nice and easy. <laughs> this is either gonna power on or explode on camera. Uh, it's spinning. No chime. It chimed! The Jank Pro chimed. Ooh, it booted. <laughs> the video works. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's alive. <laughs> Off the internally powered RTX 2070, booting into Ubuntu. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna run those benchmarks and we'll see how much has improved so far. Running benchmarks. 
so far so good. Okay, well, tests are complete and holy crap. Here is the first test I ran before any upgrades on Ubuntu on this Mac Pro. We got 465 single core score, 1575 multi core score, and now 478 single core, 2830 multi core. I do not know what is accounting for this huge jump. That video card, man, I'm sure is not hurting. You know, we see lots of jumps though in the multi core performance testing, which includes things like navigation, browser, PDF rendering. All of this stuff is up, and I'm sure, you know, things like navigation, HTML5 browser, greatly impacted by the <laughs> upgraded video card. That is freaking sweet. All right, well, I'm quite pleased with this. So far, we have a extremely upgraded Mac Pro 5.1, booting Linux off of NVMe. We have an RTX 2070 Super in this thing, wired internally, so you can actually put the case back together without any weird wire sticking out, which I think might be a first for this channel. This thing has 96 gigs of RAM in a triple channel configuration that seems to be, well, giving it quite a performance boost. But there's still one more thing we have to do, and I'm honestly a little bit scared of it. We're gonna swap in these two new matched Xeon X5690s, but it's not really so straightforward because we have to de-lid them to get them to work in this older 4,1 chassis, which has a different heatsink configuration than these were intended for. So I'm going to save that for the next episode, and we'll devote the whole thing to, <laughs> well, seeing if I can actually do this. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what becomes of this behemoth, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut King Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.